Welcome back everyone. Now let's get started with our volleyball project. So once you have signed in to Scratch, go to Mahogany Class account, click on My Stuff. You will see that Miss Claire has already created a template for you for your volleyball project. Okay, so just look for your name and then click See Inside. Once you have loaded and opened up your project, you may start coding. Okay, so before we do anything else, let's click on to player one, which is the girl sprite. We are going to add a variable score. So let's go to variables, make a variable score. Okay, and we're going to code for the player one to move and set the score to zero at the start. So to do this, go to events. When green flag is clicked, we're going to set her size as well. Go to looks. Set her size to about 60%. This will be about this size. This is a good size. And then we're going to also set our variable score to 0. Because score always starts from 0. Okay? Now once done, we are going to make her go to the right side of the screen. So let's go to motion. Bring out a go to block. Go to x100. Y minus 130. Okay, make it nice and even. All right, and then we're going to code for her to move left and right. So bring out forever. Let's bring our conditionals. If sensing the key right arrow press, then we're going to make her go to the right. So that is a change x by 10. Now let's copy this code, right click, duplicate. We're going to make one for left arrow. And if it's moving to the left, your X has to be in the opposite direction, minus 10. Okay, so once done, let's click the green flag. Let's test this out. So using your left and right arrow keys, make sure your sprite can move as such. Okay? Great, it works. So let's move on. We're going to start coding for our volleyball. So click onto your volleyball sprite. We are going to add a sound to this, so let's go to sounds, choose a sound. We're going to look for a sound that is that of the ball hitting the ground. So that will be a high conga, or you can choose your own sound effect too. Okay, so once done, go to code. We are going to fix the starting size and the properties of the ball. So let's go to events. When green flag is clicked, we are going to set the size of the ball to be a bit smaller. Let's do about 15%. And we're going to make sure the ball doesn't turn around any direction. So we're going to go to motion, take out a set rotation to don't rotate. Once done, we're going to make the ball start from somewhere random on the top of the screen. So to do this, we are going to use the motion go to XY block. Okay, X refers to left and right direction. So for this, we're going to randomize it. Go to operators. We're going to pick a random number between minus 180 to 180. So this means your scratch game will choose where the ball starts from the left or right. Okay, where it will start, it will choose. And then for Y, let's make sure the ball starts at the top. So we're going to fix this number to be 150. Okay, once done, when the ball starts, we're going to make it start falling down first. So to do this, we're going to use a direction code. We're going to use a motion, point in direction, downwards. So this is about 180. Okay, now this is just for starting. We're going to make sure the ball moves forever through the game. So we're going to add another set of code. When green flag is clicked, wait 5 seconds. And then what's going to happen is the ball will forever move. Okay? So if you want to change the movement speed, you can add a little weight block, 0 0.01 seconds, before you add a move block. Okay, so everyone, for today's game, our ball is forever moving, but what we're going to do is to change the direction. We are using the point in direction block. Okay, so this is how the ball should look like. 
after waiting 5 seconds, it will start to move downwards like that. Okay, so once done, let's continue the code. Now we're going to add a set of conditions for the ball. So what's going to happen is, if the ball falls and touches the ground, it's going to show a game over code. So this is how it works. Let's bring out a conditional. If the ball is sensing, we're going to use a combination of two blocks. Something and something. So if the ball is sensing that it is touching the edge of the game, oops, be careful when you do this, you might have to play around with the code. If it's touching the edge of the game, and which edge is it touching? The bottom edge. Bottom edge is when your direction is pointing at 180 degrees. So to do this, we're going to add a formula. Direction equals to 180 degrees because we know that 180 degrees is pointing down, right? So this means that we will touch the bottom edge. So if we touch the bottom edge, we are going to play the sound high conga and then we are going to stop the entire code. Okay, so this allows the ball to freeze the entire game. Now we're going to do an interaction between the ball and player 1. So if the ball touches player 1, it will instead bounce up. So to do this, we're going to add another condition. If sensing that we are touching player 1, okay, we are going to point in direction 0. So that means pointing up. So we are changing direction, point up, bounce up, point, okay? And we are also at the same time going to change a score point. So we're going to go to variables, we're going to change our score by 1, okay? Now, lastly, don't forget the ball has to bounce from the top of the screen down too. So to this, we are going to duplicate the first touching code. If touching the edge, but now this time round its direction is zero. So touching the top edge, it's going to change inch direction, so point in direction downwards. So if touching the top of the game, it's going to point down instead. 180 like that. Okay? Now everyone, this is the tricky part. In order for these conditionals to work, we have to fit them into the forever block here. So just carefully drag it into the forever block under the move 10 steps. Okay, so you have a giant code that looks like this. Now let's test out the bouncing motion. So press the green flag. Let's see what happens if the girl managed to catch the ball. Toing, so the ball changes direction, it bounces up, hits the ceiling, bounce down. Okay, great. And as you hit the ball, you notice that your score point will increase as well, so it works. Now, what happens if we miss the ball? So if the ball touches the ground, boom, game over. Okay, so this is how your code should work. All right, great, we're done. Now we're going to make the game more exciting. We're going to make two more volleyballs. So we're going to duplicate the volleyball sprite. Right click, duplicate. So we got volleyball number two and one more time, volleyball number three. So that means three volleyballs. The game is going to be very challenging. Okay. To make it interesting, for each volleyball, we're going to set the waiting time at the start a bit different. So for volleyball number 2, let's go to volleyball 2, look at the waiting block, wait 5 seconds, we're going to make this longer, wait 10 seconds. So volleyball 2 will appear after 10 seconds. Volleyball 3, click volleyball 3, we're going to do that for 15. Okay, so volleyball 1 appear after 5 seconds, volleyball 2, 4 after 10 seconds, Volleyball 3, 4 after 15 seconds. So there's a bit of change. Okay, let's test this out. Press the green flag. Okay, after 5 seconds, the first volleyball falls. After 10 seconds, the second volleyball falls. And finally, after 15 seconds, the third volleyball falls. So everyone, the game is starting to get very tricky and challenging if you only have one player, okay, for three volleyballs. So what can we do to make this more fun? We're going to add a multiplayer. Okay, we're going to add a second player to the game. So just nice, we have one sprite here. Let's click on player two. 
Okay, you will notice that Miss Claire has already started the code for you. So all you need to do is to fill in the blanks. Okay, now player 2 is going to move left and right as well, but it's going to start from the left side of the screen instead. So with this, the position will change. It will go to the left minus 184x and it's going to be at the bottom as well, so minus 130. Okay, and then we have to make sure that player 2 is controlled by different keys. So player 1, if you go back and check, is controlled by right and left arrow. For player 2, we're going to control it using the A and the D key. So let's bring out a sensing block. So if sensing the key A press, it's going to move to the left. Okay, and if sensing the key D press, it's going to move to the right. Okay, so it should look like this. Let's test this out. So everyone, your player 2 and player 1 should move in with different key controls. Okay? But what you notice is that player 2 is unable to hit the ball. So we have to code for the balls to touch player 2 as well. So let's go back to your volleyball code. We're going to start with volleyball 1. We're going to add a code to touch player 2. So what I'm going to do is to make this easy, I'm going to copy this if touching player 1 code. Duplicate, delete the bottom if. So now instead of touching player 1, let's do touching player 2. If touching player 2, point up, change score by 1. This is the same. Okay, and then don't forget we have to add a control event block. So when green flag is clicked, this is going to work as well. And we have to make sure this works forever also. Okay, once done, we will know that volleyball can interact with player 2. Okay, so everyone, before you save your project, don't forget you need to copy this for all the other volleyballs as well. So to do this fast, drag your code, move it to the second volleyball, wait for it to shake, and then let go. Go to volleyball 2, check. Do you have the code here? Yes. Now do the same for volleyball 3. So drag the code to volleyball 3, wait for it to shake. Let go after shaking. Okay, click volleyball tree. Check. Do you have the code here? All done. Game is finished. So finally, let's test the whole game out. We're going to do a full screen. And let's see how many scores we can get. Okay, for now, you only see one, two volleyballs in my game because volleyball two and three happen to be at the same position. Okay, but don't worry, it's completely random. Okay, there you go. So this is how the game should work. Once you are done, don't forget to save your work. File, save now. Okay, and then sign out of Scratch. Go back to ITHBL page. Do your self-checklist. Okay, have fun. Enjoy the process. See you next time.